Sunday's game, do you, do you spend more time after a game where it's just one-sided as it, as it was in that one? No, we do the same, right? It's tell the truth Mondays after a game, so we, we approach it the same. Whether it's a win or a loss, I approach all those games the same. We go in and we talk about the corrections, the mistakes that happen, why they happen, uh, the technique, just so everyone understands right what happened on a particular play. So it's not just we can never get in a situation where it's one person pointing a finger at someone else. It's all everybody knows in the room together. This is where the breakdown happened, and this is why. And this is what we have to do to fix it. So that's how we approach every game, win or loss. Is there a, a theme um, uh, from that meeting? I mean, how do you explain what, what happened there? Uh, there's no theme at the end of the day. We have to do our job better, right? Whatever the defense calls for, whatever that technique is, wherever, like we have to do our jobs better. And that's all across the board. It's technique, whether it's eyes, whatever it may be, everybody just has to be locked in and do their job better. Did you find that uh, a lot of them already knew without being told what, what had happened? No, for sure. I mean, our guys know. I mean, you know from the sideline, like watching it, looking at the pictures and the, the iPad from the from the pictures, like you can see what happened, you know, uh, on the sideline. So guys knew kind of what was going on and – it's just a matter of someone stepping up and making a play. At the end of the day in this game, right, you have to make plays on Sunday. And that's how I was telling the guys, like, if you want to be a great player, right, everybody's favorite player, their, bet, their player they root for, they're their favorite player because they make plays on Sunday. And that's what guys have to step up and do is not playing hero ball or being someone you're not. It just comes with everybody playing within the defense, playing within the scheme, doing what they're supposed to do, and you'll make the plays you're supposed to make. What was the thought process behind playing Jimmy Ward at nickel? And is that something you envision being a long-term thing? Uh, that's what we did last week for that game, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, Jimmy is a, a unique player in the sense that I think Jimmy can do things that other players just can't do. Right, Jimmy, uh, his versatility is very unique. I mean, he's probably one of the only guys in this league that can do safety, he can come down in the box, play nickel. Like, he can do it all, blitzing, covering. You know, not too many guys can do that. And that's a unique talent that Jimmy has, a God-given ability that not many guys have. So that's what makes Jimmy unique. That's what makes him stand out amongst any other players in this league. Expressed in the past to us, and I'm sure to you guys, how much he prefers to be in free safety. Did you talk to him? What kind of conversations go on before before that move happens? Yeah, we we have conversations. So and that's between me and Jimmy. We had conversations about it. They, um, obviously, your defensive end oftentimes crashed down aggressively, and the Chiefs took advantage of that. You know, Harvard three touchdowns and all their touchdown. Was that a scheme thing as far as something specific that the Chiefs were doing? Because obviously that doesn't happen every week. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you're speaking of the jet sweeps that happened. Uh, I mean, those things right there, we have to fit better on the back end. So it's a it's a fit thing from the back end level, whether it's the second level guys and the safeties, it's just all about where they fit on that particular play. And you know, we have to correct those things. And we didn't do a good job on Sunday of those. Does Ward have the ability to play in the slot in certain matchups? Uh, I think Mooney is another guy who can, you know, he can he can do whatever. He can play outside, play in the slot. Like, I think he can he can do a little bit of both. You know the Rams probably better than any offense you face. So what yeah. jumps out of you in studying them the last week? I mean, just, I mean, the thing with the Rams is, they're consistent. They're going to do what they do, right? As I think I said last time, it's always the Cooper Cup show. That hasn't changed over the past couple of weeks. Like, you find a way to get that guy the ball, and he's going to make a play for them. So that hasn't changed much for those guys. They're still running, you know, their same scheme, uh, and they find a way to get their playmakers a ball. And uh, guys do a great job of converting, whether it's a screen or a jet sweep type play. They do a great job of taking a, a short pass, uh, and taking it to the house. <laughs> that was That's the interesting part. That's the cool part about their offense, like relying on their playmakers. And you see the speed jump off with 15, 19 in the backfield, more more screens to those guys. So they have a lot of different playmakers, speedy guys who can make plays. Does that put a special onus on tackling and, and sure 
Yeah, yeah right. always, always. It always comes down to tackling, man. And that's, you know, our game is past Sunday. It always comes down to fundamentals of football. Whatever happens, however a play breaks out, like, are you sprinting to the ball? Are you, do you have effort, right? Is everybody swarming to the ball? And when we show up, are we tackling with the proper fundamentals? If you do that, no matter what happens, like, you have a, another chance to stand up and make a play. So it'll always come down to the fundamentals. You guys not needing guys not to be heroes or play hero ball. Did you see a little bit of that in the Chiefs game? No, it's, it's not that. I just always remind the guys that you're not out there by yourself, right? You don't have to be the savior coming to do something outside of what we ask you to do in this particular defense. So I just always remind the guys that so they, when things do break down, someone doesn't leave their assignment to try to go and cover somewhere else, just so to make sure everybody is accountable to their job and what they're asked to do. Just do that to the best of your ability, right? And our defense will be flying around making plays. When they they come in on Monday, do you want them angry or do you want them angry and and analytical both? Or what do you you want to see when, when they come in? Whatever emotion they have, right? I think that's it. Like it's uh, it's free. Everybody's able to express themselves differently, right? Some guys be angry. Some guys can be analytical. Whatever it is, it really, you know, doesn't matter to me either way, right? We're gonna correct what we need to correct and move forward. But it's the freedom of guys just to to be themselves, and that's the that's the uh, special part of being here with the Niners, like allowing guys just to be themselves, express themselves how they need to. And we'll all, everybody's together on everything we do to get it corrected. Back-to-back games, Amico, the defense has given up three in long situations, yep. third and 12, third and 20, third and 15. Uh, what are you seeing on those situations specifically? Yeah, on those, right, you are in an advantageous position as a defense, and you feel like, man, these plays we should get off. But I, I think it goes back to what I said earlier about right, the screens and things like that. It's making sure we're fitting it properly and making sure – at the end of the day, we're tackling the guy and getting him on the ground, right? When you are in a long situation, no matter what happens, right, somebody has to show up and make a tackle. How does Jason Brett look this week? Uh, back? Uh, Jason's, Jason's done good, right? Open this window, happy to just have him back out there, seeing him working. Like, it's just, it's great. I always say it's great to have just Jason back out there. Just I was showing the guy some clips of Jason, you know, from a couple years ago, just you know, how it looks from a pro. And that's one thing I always take back for our young guys and teaching them, just showing them examples of how it looked and things that Jason did at the corner position when he was healthy and flying around, just to show those guys that you can learn so much from JV. So it's uh, exciting to have him back out there. Happy for him. Are you seeing those same things on the field now? Yeah, well, he's, he's working his way back in, and we'll see where he, where he, where he is right, in this process. All right, thanks, you guys. McGlinchey has talked yesterday about, you know, it wasn't good enough on, on Sunday. And he's talked in the past about kind of getting in his own head and all that stuff. Um, where Do you talk to him or, or you know, do you approach him differently, kind of knowing his past and his background after a game like that? Yeah, it was. It, we uh, talked to him during the game, uh, spoke with him. It's, and it's hard to watch him individually during the game because you're trying to see defensive schematics. You're trying to see everybody. So it's hard to get him in game other than to just try and say, hey, look, just get back to your fundamentals and whatever. Um, but, but yeah, we definitely have, have addressed it afterwards. And he's better than ever. This is, you know, regardless of the result, the, the follow through afterwards, everything leading up to this has been much better than in the past. So yeah, it was, it was, there were some, there were some rough plays there at the end of the game for him uh, and not, not good enough by any stretch of the imagination, but it's different than in past years. Definitely his approach, like I said, his approach since coming off the injury, his approach last year before getting hurt and then how he's worked on himself throughout uh, was much better. Was the result what we wanted? No, it was still the, not a good enough result. And there's no excuse for it. So we have to continue to work to fix that. You're talking about just how he handles it mentally? Yeah, the approach to what, okay, so a bad play occurs. Uh, one of Mike's things has been preventing the next bad play. You know, sometimes it's, 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 uh, it's kind of one place led to another. And that, that happened a little bit on Sunday. You know, how do I fix this happened? 
okay, what do I do? And, it's, and so a lot of people are just, hey, just get back to my fundamentals and realize it was just a bad play. Um, and then the, the, this was the first time the approach was, you know, so that's been the approach. The, he's been much better that way as far as not letting one bad play affect another, which happened, you know, we saw early in the year, right? Early, one of the first pass plays of the season, right? We got a sack in Chicago, then settled down and had a really nice game. Um, that's been his mindset all the way through. So it's unfortunate, not a good game, really, really good player in a game that got out of hand and, uh, and, and we have to do a better job. He didn't have much time, obviously, to get up to speed before playing the other day. He talked about how coaches and other people were helpful in getting and helping him in that process. Can you just kind of shed light on what that's like if, if you were involved in that, especially? Uh, well, I would have had to wait in line because between Kyle and, and the two and, and Bobby Turner and, and Anthony Lynn, he got plenty of, of tutoring from from everybody. Last week was much more about to getting him up to speed on. The, the the nuts and bolts of the offense, you know, cadence, snap count, formations, all those types of things, and then his specific package for the game, and then how much we could get him involved in, in learning the package for the game. So there was much more just that one-on-one, -on -one very very specific learning. So I was I was not involved much at all. I was, you know, encouraging and, and uh, just saying, let me know when he's in there, and, and if we'll, we'll try and block for him. This week, have you, have you been more involved? No, it's actually now it's it's even more so those guys because there's he's more involved in all the game plan and obviously we've talked specifically about plays that are good for him and things like that. But it's it's pretty much working with uh, with the running back coaches. How was Trent first game back? He was good. He was good. It was uh, it was good. It was I, I said to him after the game to be perfectly honest with you. I said it didn't seem you seemed a little calm, you know, because Trent's very, very, very competitive and he always gets wired during the games. He wants to compete and play hard and play well, and he did. Uh, he was more, it, it was a long day, 80 plays for uh, for a guy that hasn't played in a few weeks. He was making sure that he was, he was, had, you know, kept his win the whole game and did all that. So he did a nice job. Uh, I would say that it wasn't, uh, you know, it was, I think he's, he'll make another step this week. Jeff Wilson Jr. ran so well, and Jeff Wilson Jr. ran so well against uh, Kansas City. It almost looked like he was making a statement. How has he Responded to the addition of Christian. Yeah, I think he's worked really hard. I mean, Jeff's just Jeff. I, I, like I said, you, you guys have heard me say before how much I, I respect Jeff and the job that he does, and I think he's handled it like a professional. I mean, anybody that you bring another player in at the position, you're thinking, okay, is this guy here to take my job? I, would, I don't, I can't speak for Jeff on that. So I think he's risen to the occasion. He has competed to say, look, I'm, I'm still here and I still do a great job, and I don't think there's ever been a. Uh, I think it's great that we have more than one. I've said that before as well. I think you need more than one guy back there, and when we get Elijah back there, we'll have three guys, and then the young guys coming along as well. So I really like the group that we have. And Jeff will continue to run hard, as will Christian, uh, as will the other guys. Kyle talked uh, yesterday about how the process of building his game plan for a game has changed just a little bit because it's all different personnel on the coaching staff and the offensive side. How have you seen it? Because you've been around for quite a bit with him. It's all different. I think we talk about it often is that, uh, you know, there's, there's, I don't think there's anybody on the staff that's doing the exact same job they did a year ago. Even though I was the offensive line coach, I didn't have the, the duties of run game coordinator. And I think every single person you could point to on the offense is, is in a different role. So it's just, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the same, but it is different. It's just all of us, how Kyle uses each one of us, how we all have to supplement uh, helping him formulate a game plan. Uh, it, it's, it's just different. It, it's just, he had, uh, uh, Mike for so many years that could always kind of be the the knew what Kyle needed and could could go around the staff to get what Kyle needed and and help Kyle with all those things and so now it's more and we're just it's a process of realizing okay this is what Chris is going to be able to do in this role and still be able to coach the offensive line this is what Bobby Slow is going to bring to the table this is what Brian Flurry is going to bring to the table and everybody now we're, we're and then you see people's strengths and weaknesses it's like during the season you realize hey Aaron Banks pulls better, is a better puller than Spencer Burford, right? So if we're going to pull somebody, we're probably going to pull Aaron a little bit more. You know, not that Spencer can't do it or if the play calls for it, but same with coaches. You know, this coach is a little bit better at this, this coach is a little bit better at that. I mean, you know, uh, my strength isn't isn't making sure that uh, the Excel spreadsheet is set up properly with, with exclamation points, parentheses, and all of a sudden, who knows what the game plan would look like, right? So somebody else is going to do that, or McDaniel was really good at working the Excel spreadsheet or whatever it might be. So that's a that's a random example, but you get my point. Uh, it's really, yeah, I'm, I'm not real good at spreadsheets yet. Let me know when McCaffrey's ready to go in and we'll get him blocked. 
what kind of overlap is there for how you would block Christian versus Debo? Uh, I meant that more than like you know whatever whatever Christian's in for, we're going to board a block for anybody who's in there. But no, it really there isn't much difference I'd say between any of the guys. It's just the the style of, and I think with Christian, it's he really does everything. There's some Debo plays obviously, but it's not like you say, hey guys, we got the Debo package going in, or hey guys, we got Christian coming in. You know, it's it's going to be who's ever who's ever's up for the carries, and we're going to be ready to block whatever it is, and we're more preparing for what we think is going to be good against the defense. And then if there's something that we say, hey boy, we'd really love to get, we think this play is going to be good, and this would be a good play for Christian, or this would be a good play for Jeff, then let's put him in for that play. Been, uh, one of the few teams that, maybe one of the only teams that, um, where Aaron Donald is concerned, he's, he's formidable, but he doesn't totally wreck the game against you, like he has on so many other teams. How, how many people does it take to do that? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, Aaron Donald's a great player and has had great games against us. I think it's a group effort. I think, uh, you know, whether it's uh, whether it's whether it's the, the protection plan, whether it's the quarterback getting the ball out, and how we design the passing game, whether it's the types of runs we run and where we run them, I mean, I will say that he is a focal point for us on every single play. There isn't a play that that we don't run where Aaron Donald isn't considered. And uh, I've been real fortunate in my career when I started with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, uh, John Randall was the three technique, and, and Warren Sapp was in the division as a three technique in Tampa. Then I went to Tampa and went against John Randall. And I would always talk to my friends when they'd go against us at both places. And on the, in the olden days, before the spreadsheets and the computerized blocking sheets and everything else, you did them by hand. But every single time, you would circle. They would circle, there's where John Randall is. There's where John Randall is. There's where Warren Sapp is. There's where Warren Sapp is. For me, it was, and then there's where Reggie White is, and there's where Warren Sapp is. There's where George, you know, John Randall is. And you better know where those guys are. And Aaron Donald's just one of those players. And it happens weekly. I mean, shoot, the guy, the guy with Atlanta last week, the guy from Kansas City. I mean, these guys are exceptional players, and they will tear your game up if you're not aware of where they are. And I think that that's something that you really have to do. And, and Aaron Donald obviously is. I've said it before. You know, you're, you're only uh, you're dying a slow death. You're doing the best that you can. You know, to, to make sure that, that you try and do it. And, and there's things that they can do to, to, to make sure that, that he gets his one-on-one -on -one matchups and has a chance to wreck the game and do things to you. And, and even when you set everything up right, he still does things. And I think of the last play of the Super Bowl, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals slid to him. The Cincinnati Bengals were doing everything they could to protect, and he beat the guy in the area that should be the most protected. He still won the battle and got to the quarterback and wrecked the last play of the Super Bowl. Uh, and they had everything set up right. And that, there you go, right? Prime time, great players. I can't tell you how many times we said, I kept saying, I think Reggie White's finally slowed down. I think Reggie's fine. Oh, okay, we don't have to worry. And then next thing you know, man, you better have the whole plan set up. Or next thing you know, Reggie is famous hump move. And I can't tell you how many offensive tackles I coached someone flying across Lambeau Field as Reggie did one of his famous hump moves on a guy when I thought Reggie had finally been, been done. And it's the same thing here, man. It just doesn't end. It's a challenge every week. And whether we've done good or bad, I mean, it's, it's a team effort. And, but I'll just say, he is considered on every single play. When about that last play of the Super Bowl, that remind you a bit of the last play of the NFC Championship game as well? A little different. I think that the our last play was um, – he did a great job. I'm not taking anything away. There was another problem going on in the play, which then led to the breakdown of the protection. And then he was able to make the play in, in a critical time of the game. Uh, it wasn't as much as that one where legitimately we had X, Y, or Z going on with him. And then all of a sudden, he broke through all that. It was more of a something else was going on that, that led to him being able to make a good play. But again, he's you're not going to block him for long. So if something else breaks down, he'll take full advantage of it. Of both seasons. And this season is odd because you guys have a lot of talent. There have been injuries, but you're three and four. Why do you think it hasn't all come together this year? Oh, I, that's a gigantic question for people that, that aren't that aren't Chris Furster. So, uh, yeah, but that's definitely a uh, – it's always a challenge. Like I said, you've heard me last week. I, I got excited last week talking about a few things that I really believe that uh, – you know, every season is a challenge. And, and when you look at it, I was looking at it the other day, I was looking at how many teams there's, I think there's four teams in the AFC and four teams in the NFC that are outside of that 500 or below range. And there's only one team this week in the NFC, I was counting, I was looking at it too, there's only one team that can set themselves apart from that again this week, and that's Seattle. Everybody else, if everybody else wins except for Seattle, we'll still all be around 500. And that's just kind of where we are right now. And I don't think it's, uh, 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 you know, uh, whatever, 
whatever the board is, to say, you know, we're, we're not we're living up to expectations. Yeah, we want to play better. And so do all those other teams that, that have talent and have good players and are around 500 right now. And that's what the season's about. I really think it's a product of not necessarily this team. I just think it's a, the, the, the two years of COVID, the, uh, the lack of off season, the lack of training camp, I think it's done great things for player safety, right? Players aren't getting hurt in training camp. Players barely play in the preseason, not getting hurt there. But then uh, I, I, one coach was talking, I, I won't mention names, but said, I, I was talking to a guy the other day that said, when something's broke, like we're not good in the third and one. Well, you don't go out in full pads for three days and have short yardage scrimmages or goal line scrimmages or, you know, you just don't. You, you just have to fix it within the process of playing games. So uh, it's not an excuse. It is what it is. You just have to continue. I think it's an explanation to you develop during the season. And so the more available you have your players, the more they're available to play every Sunday, the more you're able to practice every week, you start to stack one game on top of the other. And with the availability, with the health of the players, and with the reps, you hopefully get better. So that now is the time you separate, right? Now, between now and Thanksgiving, we're going to find out if we're, who stays at 500, who starts to creep above that, or who falls below that. And, and that's what, as I said, that's, what gets, that's the challenge of the season with whoever the next man up is. And, uh, and that's where the challenge becomes even greater. Thank you, guys.